this ESMO 17 meeting has been a very important meeting for the lung cancer uh, community because we had a lot of new paradigm in uh, many uh, clinical settings. So for us, as it was in 2016, it's a very important meeting. The Pacific study address uh, the potential interest of adding immunotherapy after chemo radiotherapy in locally advanced non-small cell lung cancer. So it was a situation in which we did not have any progress uh, over a decade. Pacific trial is the first randomized trial that asked the question about the role of durvalumab, a novel anti pdl one agent, in the context of patients with stage 3 non-small cell lung cancer treated with chemo radiation as a consolidation treatment. In that study, we have included 711 patients with stage 3 disease treated with chemo radiation and that did not progress at the end of the chemo radiation. Within the next six weeks after finishing the chemo radiation treatment, the patients were included and randomized on a 2 to 1 ratio to receive durvalumab, the anti pd agent that we talk about. 10 mg per kick every two weeks, or placebo. In this trial, uh, it's been shown that uh, PFS is increased with the durvalumab treatment as compared to placebo treatment with a hazard ratio of 0.52 and a p-value of 0.0001, which means a decrease of about 48% of the cyst progression all along the study period. In terms of median PFS, that means an increase in PFS from 5.6 months on the control arm to 16.8. That means more than 11 months with the, control, with the Durvalumab arm. Importantly, that benefit with a hazard ratio of 0.52 was consistent across all studies and groups, including Uh, PDL1 expression stages. Consistent with those data, there was an increase in response rate and a decrease in the appearance of new lesions on patients treated with durvalumab, and the associated toxicity to the treatment was quite manageable and consistent with prior reports in the metastatic disease setting. I think the take-home message from this study is that we have a new standard of care in this pathology and it raised also some hypotheses about the potential synergistic effect between immunotherapy and radiotherapy that should be studied in other studies. The FLORA trial uh, is a randomized trial who uh, try to uh, see if uh, ozimertinib, that is known to work in second line in T790M mutated patient, was uh, superior to the standard of care tyrosine kinase inhibitor in first line patient, whatever the uh, GFR mutation was. FLORA is the largest study conducted in EGFR mutation positive disease to this date with 556 patients that were randomized one to one to ozimertinib or standard of care. PFS, the primary endpoint, was significantly better with a 54% reduction in the risk of death or progression for patients treated with osimertinib with a hazard ratio of 0.46. We saw a very promising hazard ratio for survival at 0.63, also favoring osimertinib. We saw activity in the brain for osimertinib better than that with the standard of care. And The safety profile also favored osimertinib. The results from the FLORA study are very impressive and they should convince every physician to use ozimertinib frontline for EGFR mutated patient. Nevertheless, we have to put this into the context of EGFR mutated disease and we need to have the overall survival and to probably better understand the mechanism of resistance uh, in patients that are exposed to ozimertinib to anticipate the further line of treatments. For the BRAF mutated patient, the question is what is the best treatment as we have no validated treatment uh, to date. Uh, this is a quite rare population, so we are not able to perform a randomized study. That's why it's a phase two study with three cohorts. Cohort A and cohort B have been 
recently reported and published, cohort C address specifically uh, the efficacy of the combination of dabrafenib and trametidim in first line in BRAF mutated patients. In terms of results, this trial achieved the objective, response rate 64% and median PFS 10.9 months. And on the other part, it was to evaluate the safety of the combination and no unexpected toxicity was observed. It was classical toxicity. So that means this determined a new standard of care in patients with a BRAF V600E mutated with a dabrafenib and trametinib. I think that given the impressive result of this study, every patient with BRAF mutation uh, should be uh, given uh, this uh, combination and that every non-small cell lung cancer at a metastatic stage should be screened for BRAF V600E mutation. The IFCT0302 study addressed a very important issue and a very uh, practical routine question. How should we follow up our patient after thoracic surgery for early stage lung cancer? So we don't know yet if we should perform CT scan every six months or every year and for how long for this patient. So this study specifically addressed this, uh, this question. The IFCT, the French Thoracic Co uh, Cooperative Intergroup, performed a phase three randomized trial, uh, including a large number of patients, 1,775 patients, eval evaluating the interest of chest CT scan in the follow-up of a completely resected uh, uh, non-small cell lung cancer uh, patients. Patients were randomized one to one, and uh, the minimal follow-up arm uh, consisted of a follow-up with clinic visits, including history and physical examination and chest X-rays. In the maximal follow-up arm, patients also had clinic visits and chest X-rays with the addition of thoracodominal CT scan. And in case of non-adenocarcinoma histology, they also underwent fibro-optic bronchoscopy. In both arms, a patients completed follow-up every six months during the first two post-operative years and uh, yearly until five years. The study showed that there was no survival difference between both arms. That means that CT scan surveillance did not significantly prolong survival. However, when you look at the survival curves, the later parts of the curves diverge. So, we performed a, an exploratory analysis with a landmark analysis of two years. And in patients who had a disease recurrence within, the two, within two years, uh, there was no difference between both surveillance arms. However, in patients who did not develop a recurrence within two years, uh, there was a significant survival benefit in patients who had a city-based uh, follow-up. This result suggests that earlier detection of recurrences occurring during the first two years did not translate into survival advantage. However, beyond two years, patients are probably more at risk of second primary cancer than of aggressive recurrences, and they may be more amenable to curative treatment and therefore may benefit from uh, the addition of CT scan. I think that the impact is that CT scan is not mandatory in the follow-up of this patient uh, at least during the first two years. Nevertheless, we observed a trend of benefit in terms of overall survival later on that maybe overlap with uh, secondary lung cancer detection and that uh, this uh, specific issue should be addressed uh, specifically. Mm -hmm.